guys, welcome to my zone online school. My name is Justicia Shipena and today I'll be with you in the train of learning. So before we get into our exciting lesson, let's sanitize our hands. So there's no such thing as enough sanitizing. So make sure you rub it in between your fingers, on top of your hands and make sure you don't forget your little thumbs. So let's get into the lessons. Today we have pre-primary and grade one. Week three, lesson five with teacher Lindina. Take it away, teacher Lindina. Explanation of symbols on worksheets are as follows. Use coloring crayons to color the picture. Use your finger to follow the track or line or show the correct picture. Use a coloring crayon to draw a line or write a number or sound. Look at the picture and say the number or sound out loud. Use a scissors to cut on the dotted line. Look at the picture. Use these symbols for the lesson of the day, which will be allocated at the top right side of each page. For example, lesson one, prepositions and directions. Welcome to my Zone Online School. My name is Teacher Huakus and I'm joined by my friend. This week's theme is my senses. But before we start, let's sanitize our hands. It is important to sanitize our hands to kill all the germs. And if you don't have a sanitizer at home, Please go ahead and use soap and water. And today's lesson is going to be about comparison and handwriting. Please turn to page 21. Here we're going to look at the pictures and compare them. Look at all the pictures very carefully and color in the one which one is not the same the one which is different so if we start from the first hand look at the first one the second one oh yes they are the same you are right and the third one there is something not right with that thing Wow, yes, you can now color in that one. And the rest of the pictures, if you look at the second one, where the hats are, look very carefully. The first one, yes. The second one, ooh, I think something is not right. Can you try and fix that? But by fixing it, you can color it in. And because you are so excited, I'm going to leave the rest of the pictures for you to do all by yourself. I know you can do it. Let's turn to page 22. And this page is all about emotions. How you are feeling right now. I can see your faces. You are all smiling and you are trying to be friendly with teacher. That is beautiful. So that's what we're going to be doing in this page. This exercise is all about coloring in the friendly faces. So I'm going to do the first one with you. Look at the first picture. Ooh, that boy is not very happy. Maybe he's hungry or his mommy has left him home alone. The second one is looking at me and he's sticking his tongue out. No boy, that's not very polite. 
The third one is wearing glasses and he is smiling. Well done. So that's the friendly face we have to color in. Yes, you can do the rest of the pictures. Yeah, you can do it all by yourself because you can just look at the face and see which one is friendly and color it in. Thank you so much for listening. Now we move on to page 23. It's again the same thing. Look at the faces. It's all about emo emotions. It's how we feel at this moment. I am very excited. But now you have to look at the pictures and color in the one which is different. So you look at all the pictures in the first row and then you color in the one which is different. So let's do this in this case. Look at the first boy and the second boy and the third boy looks confused to me. Yes, you are right. Now you can color in that boy. Well done. Just try and color in inside the lines. Well done. You did it. Now you can do that all by yourself. Can we turn to page? 24. Are you there? What can you see? Yes, I can see a pipe. Wow, that brings us back to our five senses. What sense are you going to use now? Smell, well done. I can see you are learning. Now we're going to follow those dots. Start at the first arrow and follow and join the dots. Keep the pen on the line while you do that. Don't remove it until you come to the end. If you are done with that, start at the second arrow and carry on until you are done, till you get to the end. I can see this is coming on very well. You can do that all by yourself. You are enjoying the lessons, I can see. And I'm also very, very happy and excited about this. Let's turn to page 25. Are you there? Are you sure? Can we turn? You can come back and do that later on. On this page, we are having a baby rhino. So cute, even a friendly rhino. We need to look after our rhinos. Yes, well done. What color is the rhino? Oh, it can be gray, it can be brown, because they can be white. So you choose what color you're going to use. But here we will just more concentrate on coloring in the reno. Just keep your coloring in inside the lines. It can be the color of your choice or you can ask mommy and daddy to help you with the color. Well done. You can do the rest of the coloring in. Can we turn to page 27? Yes, look at those beautiful faces on this number. We did it previously, but this is the first third commandment. Yes, the third commandment. And remember, we had a little rhyme going with the number when we were forming it. So it goes as follows, around the tree and around the tree. That's the way we make a three. Well done. Now, can you color it in all by yourself? Remember to start at the top. That's how we form our number three. Can we turn to page 28? Wow, one of my favorite animals. And it's a giraffe this time. Let's look at this numbers. There's lots of numbers. But we need to start 
with number one, joining the dots for the giraffe to be complete. Well done. Did you find number one? Yes. Let's look very closely at the dot and then you join the dots until you get to the last number. I hope you will get help with that. And then you color it in at the end when you are done joining the dots. Now we're going to move on to page 29. Let's look at the beautiful fish. Yes, we are going to do the same thing which we did on the previous page by connecting the dots. Start at number one. Yes, number one is by the eye of the little eye of the little fish. Yes, start on the dot and let's join. I'm going to count with you until you are done. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yes, I understand. Thank you for telling me. Now I'm going to do it slowly so that everybody can catch up. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Thank you so much for telling me that I was too fast. When you are done joining the dots, please color in the fish. Now we're going to look at the bottom of the page. And there we can see two dotted kittens. And we're going to do the same thing with it. In this case, there is no number. But I will suggest that we start around the face. You can start anywhere, but just remember to do it from the left. And then you do the second one on the right. Well done. I know you can do it all by yourself without anybody's help. Let's turn to page 30. Can we look at the picture? That's a picture of a sloth. Seems to me the sloth is very tired. He's snoozing away, but without making noise. Can we find the numbers because we're going to join the dots to get the outline before we write. Okay, number one. Yes, you are right. By the ear of the sloth. Yes, with the dot, we're going down this time around two three four five am i too fast no okay thank you let's slow down six seven eight nine ten eleven yes hope you will finish the exercise all by yourself at home. Hope you will enjoy that you have enjoyed this lesson like we did. But before we go, let's sanitize our hands. This is very important to sanitize our hands to be able to kill all the germs. But if you do not have a sanitizer at home, go ahead and use soap and running water. But before we say go, let's invite our friend Zozi to come say goodbye. Bye. Hi everyone, my name is Shoshi and I am Peck. My mommy used to tell me that um, I need to wash my hands and sanitize it to keep the germs away. Also one thing you can remember is 
to sing the alphabet song while you wash your hands. Uh, after that, it will be super clean. I usually do it. Until next time, bye! Whoa, that was so cool. Thank you so much, teacher Lendina. I think my handwriting is better now, and I think I'm best friends with my pencils and my crayons. But let's not forget about our grade twos and threes. So we are moving over to teacher Guriras, and she will be giving us week three, lesson five. <music> Hello friends, welcome to my Sewn Online School. I am Ms. Guriras and I have Landre here with me. This week's theme is culture and cultural events. Before we start with our today's topic, I would like for us to put on our mask, take a bottle of hand sanitizer, sanitize your hands thoroughly, do not forget between the fingers as well as around your thumbs. During these lessons, we will focus on nouns, adjectives, pronouns, verbs, and reading. Right, I would like for us to turn to page 24 whereby we are going to learn about nouns and adjectives on both grade two and grade three level. But first of all, we are going to look at the nouns. It says, fill in the correct noun, use the word in the word box, so we can remember what a noun is from our previous lesson, which is the uh, name of a place, name of a thing, and name of a person. Those ones are all nouns. But the nouns we can also see, touch, feel, hear, and taste. Anything or something that we can see, touch, feel, hear, and taste can also be part of the nouns. Let us quickly look on the word box. We have the words like chair, door, garden, bag, and dog. Let us quickly do number one together. The 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 is made from wood. What is made out of wood? Which of those words will fit in those in that sentence there? Is it going to be the chair that is made out of wood? Is it going to be the door? Is it going to be the garden? Is it going to be back or the dog? That is correct. We can either say chair or door, all right? Or you can either even write both of the words because both chairs and doors are made out of wood as well. Let us quickly look at number two. My da 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 is heavy. So what do you think will fit there? Which word can we use there? Can we say my chair is heavy? My door is heavy. My garden is heavy. My back is heavy. My dog is heavy. But since we've already used the word chair and door, let us focus on the other three, between those three words. Which one can we put there? Yes, that is correct. My back is heavy. Okay? So I would like for you to do number three, four, and five. Let's look at the bottom one. It says about adjectives. What are adjectives? Adjectives are describing words. It describes something. For example, if you're holding um, a banana in your hands, how would you describe that banana? You can say it's sweet, it's yellow, it's, 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 it's tasty, and all those ones. The ones that you describe the banana for, those ones are called the adjectives because you are describing 
your banana. Okay, now let's quickly look at the what's in the box. It says green, big, cold, and hot. Let us quickly do number one together. The ball is heavy. What is the describing word there? What is the adjective here? Yes, that is correct. The heavy is the adjective because it describes the ball. It describes the ball. So the heavy is the adjective. Now let's quickly look at number two. The da, 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 truck is noisy. So what about the truck? How can we describe the truck? What adjective can we put in there to describe the truck that is noisy? Can we put in green? Can we put in big? Can we put in cold or hot? I would like for you to do that one. Number three as well as number four. I would like to, for us to turn to page 25. I hope you have enjoyed your previous lesson about nouns and adjectives. Now, during this lesson, we are going to look at pronouns and verbs. First, we'll focus on the pronouns. What do you think are the pronouns? Pronouns are the words we use to replace the nouns with. For example, if you don't want to use the person's name, you use a pronoun to replace that person's name. For example, Miss Kuriras likes to eat chocolate. Instead of saying Miss Kuriras likes to eat chocolate, you can say she likes to eat chocolate. So the words for the pronouns are she, their, mine, it, may, my, pardon me, our, and we. Those are all pronouns. So we are going to use the box to fill in our activity. The first sentence, that bag is da 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 is blue. So which means we are supposed to fill in two pronouns there. That bag is, what are we going to use? That bag is sh, she, their, mine, it, my, our, or we. Which one do you think, which of the pronouns do you think we can use there? That bag is mine. It is blue. So the words mine and it are the pronouns that replaces the names. I would have said that bag is Ms. Gurira's. Ms. Gurira's bag is blue. So instead of repeating the names, we replace it with the pronoun. Let's quickly read number two. Susie says that da 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 likes school. Which pronoun do you think we can use there? That is correct. Susie says that she likes school because Susie can be a girl. Let's assume. Susie says that she likes school. Let's read quickly number three. Josh and Jack like to visit. It's two people now. Instead of saying Josh and Jack likes to visit, Josh and Jack's mom, we have to replace it with a pronoun. What can we say? Yes. Josh and Jack like to visit their mom because there are two people. Correct. I would like for you to do number four, five, and five. Let's look there below wherever we have to fill in the verb. What do you think are the verbs again? We have done this already. Verbs are doing words, action words, something that we are doing. Like right now you are listening and you are doing your activities and Ms. Guriras is teaching you. Teaching is a verb because that's what I'm doing. Let's quickly look in the box. We have words there. All of them are verbs. 
Run, read, sleep, sit, play, eat, and drinks. Let's complete number one. I da 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 a book. So what do you do with a book? Yes, you read it. You read a book. So I read a book. Now read will be the verb. Number two, we da 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 with our toys. What do you do with the toys? Do we run with the toys? Runs. Do we eat the toys? No, but we play with them. So the word, the verb play is the correct answer for number two. Number three, the children da 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 in their books. What do you think the children will be doing in their books? That one, you have to complete it on your own. Number four, the boy da da da. What do you think the boy is doing? Number five, the girl, da da da, her milk. What is the girl doing with her milk? There is the word hidden there in the word box that you have to choose from. I would like for you to do complete the activities on your own. I hope you have enjoyed our previous lesson about pronouns and verbs. I would like for you to turn to page 26, grade 2 level, reading comprehension. Now we are going to read a story about our country and then we are going to follow the questions. Answer the questions that follow. Sorry about that. Our country. My name is Caesar. I come from Vintuk, the capital city of Namibia. We have different cultural groups. But I am a Damara. I speak Kwekwe Kova, English and Afrikaans. My friend is from Oshiwambo tribe. She loves to eat Mahangu. My teacher speaks Oshierero with, some, with me sometimes, sorry. She always say Mundu Wangia, which means my child, I love Namibia. Let us quickly read the questions and I will read the story again. It says answer the questions. But before we have to answer the question, we have to read the comprehension again. Number one, which country is Caesar from? Pardon me. From which country is Caesar? Number two, how many languages can Caesar speak? Number three, what tribe is Caesar's friend? Number four, what is the capital city of Namibia? Number five, how does Caesar feel about Namibia? Let us quickly read the passage again to find the answers for the questions. Our country. My name is Caesar. I come from Ventuk the capital city of Namibia. We have different cultural groups, but I am a Damara. I speak Kwekwe Kovak, English and Afrikaans. My friend is from Oshiwambo tribe. She loves to eat mango. My teacher speaks Oshierero with, with me sometimes. She always say Mundu Wangia, which means my child, I love you. I love Namibia, sorry. Now we have to answer the questions. And the answers, we have to find it in the passage. The teacher, which is me, I'm only going to help you with the first question. Which country, from which country is Caesar? Let us find the country in the passage. Yes, he is from Namibia. So we have to write the answer as Namibia. Caesar is from Namibia. So the rest of the questions, you have to find the answers in the passage to answer the questions. Let's turn to page 37, 
Now this is grade three level. Oh, sorry, 27, grade three level. The new dress. Also, we have to read the passage here to find the answers for the, to find the answers in the passage. Agnes was sad. She had been invited to her friend's birthday party. She should have been happy. The party was a princess party. Each girl had to wear a pretty dress and a crown. So they looked like a princess. And they had to say what type of princess they were. Agnes was sad because she did not have a dress. She knew that her parents did not have money to buy her a party dress. So she, so she was going to the party in her traditional dress. Mother said, don't be sad. I have a plan. You must just wait and see. For the next few days, mother spent a lot of time in her room with the door closed. Agnes wondered what she was doing in her room. Let us look at the questions. Number one, what kind of a party was Agnes invited to? Number two, why was Agnes sad? Number three, what did the other girls wear to the party? Number four, what was Agnes planning to wear to the party? And the last, number five, do you think Agnes will love what her mom made for her? How do you think the story will end? We will read the passage again to find the answers to our questions. The new dress. Agnes was sad. She had been invited to her friend's birthday party. She should have been happy. The dress, the party was a princess party. Each girl had to wear a pretty dress and a crown. So they looked like princess. And they had to say what type of princess they were. Agnes was sad because she did not have a dress. She knew that her parents did not have money to buy her a party dress. So she was going to, <coughs> sorry. So she was going to the party in her traditional dress. Mother said, don't be sad. I have a plan. You must just wait and see. For the next few days, Mother spent a lot of time in her room with the door closed. Agnes wondered what she was doing in her room. Okay, now let's quickly look at the questions. What kind of party was Agnes invited to? So what do you think? Yes, that's correct. She was invited to a princess party. All right. So you have to find the rest of the answers to your questions in the passage. I hope you will enjoy reading. Let us quickly go to page 28. Syllables, grade 2 level. What are syllables? Syllables are words that are split into parts. Those ones are called the syllables syllables is to clap as you read each word for example the word bat we only have one clap can we try clapping the word bat it's only one syllable how about the word monkey so it means the word monkey will have two syllables how about the word cultural? Cultural. So it means it will have three syllables. We can also put our hand at the bottom of our chin whenever we are clapping 
the syllables. Whenever our jaw drops, can we notice something? Or whenever our mouth opens, can you notice something? Yes, whenever our mouth opens, it always opens at the vowel sound. Can you see that? Yes. Now let's quickly read um, the words, the following words below. And so we are going to divide these words also in the syllables. For example, number one, monster. Let us try to clap the word monster and see how many times we clap it. Monster. So it's two claps, so it means we divide the word into two syllables. Let us look at number two. It says butterfly. Let us quickly clap the word butterfly. Butterfly. So it's how many syllables? It's three syllables. How about the word cat? Cat. So it's only one cat. So it means only one syllable. Let's quickly go to number 18. 18 is a long word. Playground. Let us try to clap it out. Playground. But it's only two claps. So it means we can only split it into two syllables. How about the word number 10? Family. Let us quickly try to clap the word family. Family. So it's three claps. So we break the word down into three syllables. Can we stick another one? Sure. Let us have number 12. Understand. Let us quickly clap the word understand. And Understand. So how many times did we clap it? Three times. So it means we can split the word into three syllables. Now I would like for you to practice with the rest of the words that we did not do. We could perhaps take one more. Let's take number seven. Basketball. Let us quickly clap the word basketball. Bus. Get ball. All right. So how many times do we clap it? Three times. So it means we can split the basketball word into three syllables. Now I would like for you to continue with the rest of the words by chopping down, chopping them down into smaller words. Right, let's turn to page 29, grade 3 level, counting in threes. I would like for us to revise by counting in threes by completing these number patterns. All right. For example, if we are having number three on top, we have to skip counting in threes. So let us quickly complete the first one. Three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen. 18, 21, 24, 27, 30, 33. That is beautiful. Now, how about 30? We start with 30, but then we jump three places forward in order for us to get the next answer. So we skip counting also in threes, but now we start at number 30. So, 30, 33, 36, 39. Okay, let us quickly stop there. Let's skip one, two, three blocks. What number do you think will be there? That's correct. It should be 58. Correct. Now, if you have to skip, Two boxes, what number will be following? You have to do that one also on your own. Let's quickly move to number 60. If we have to stand at number 60 and we have to move three places forward, what number are we going to get? 63, that is correct because we are counting in threes. If we have to add another three to the 63, what are we going to get? 
66, brilliant. How about we add another three again? 69, that is wonderful. And if we add another three, what are we going to get? Yes, beautiful, a 72. So I would like for you to complete all the boxes by counting in threes and then you will get your answers. All right, just play around with the numbers a little bit. I would like for you to turn to page 30. This is also for grade two and grade three level. This is just also about playing around with the numbers. All right, it says fill in the missing numbers in the table. So you can see there are empty boxes without any numbers in them. For example, one, two, and there is a gap. And then we continue with number four. What number do you think should come between two and a four? That is correct. It has to be number three. Now let's move all the way down to number 91. We have a 91, 92, so we continue counting. What will follow or what number comes after 92? That is correct. It is 93. What number follows? That is correct. It is 94. Good. Now, if we have to go all the way down to number 150, what number do we find before we say 150? Yes, that is correct. We find 149. And before 149, what number comes first? Beautiful, 148. So the rest is up to you. Play with the numbers around by filling in all the missing numbers on the worksheet. Now we have come to the end of our lesson. I hope you have enjoyed it. But before we go, please make sure to always sanitize your hands thoroughly throughoutly between your fingers around your thumbs as well and if you need to go outside please make sure you always put on your mask and we are going to invite our friend Zoshki to come and say goodbye Zoshki say bye 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 <laughs>
All right. You can just uh, take us through the process of receiving or not receiving the booklets for that matter. And you can also just highlight some of the um, key points to make sure that uh, the child here in Marintal and all over Hardab receives the booklet. Okay, first of all, um, we received the first bunch of books. It was the 28th April of April that we received the first bunch. It was for grade zero and one. It was around 3,000 because it was um, delivered at the regional office and then from there we um, divided between the schools. At this stage we only gave it because it was a bit uncertain how we should distribute it and how things are going to happen. So what we did, we take, took the statistics, we have it and then we started to distribute it as soon as possible. Firstly, we start in, in the town itself, Marintal, and make sure that all the learners here um, have, that the principals were informed, they came to collect and then also from the outside schools mm -hmm. that were in town and came and collect for their schools or some schools around them. And then the second bunch of books was only delivered in a rear bot. That is what we have known, the grade four and five, mm -hmm. as well as the six, seven. And today my colleague from rear bot told us that um, they also received grade zero and one, the second booklet. Mm -hmm. I guess it will be um, week two or three, yes, four or what, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that is as far as we, know about the booklets all right uh, maybe so if you can add um what would then what would the process then be like would the the principals say for example here in marinta would they then come here and collect the booklets say now we deliver the booklets here or how would that work yes usually we, we contact them as soon as the books are arriving then we contact them mm -hmm. and we also try to to, to to get the totals ready for each school depending on how much each school needs depending also on whether the books are enough. Mm. So we, we, we try to see to distribute evenly, depending on the total that we receive. Mm. Then they come and collect, and then we also keep a record of who received and who don't receive. But at this stage, I think um, the number of books that we are receiving is not really enough. Mm. And it's also difficult to, to decide which of those schools must get, must get first. Usually we would like to give preference to rural schools and then urban schools but you know mm -hmm. all of them want books so it's difficult to sometimes to decide who must get first yes. because the books are not enough the booklets yes mm. and maybe can you also touch um, on what impact do you think that these booklets will have on the kids um, once they reach the, the children eventually I think uh, what we have picked up from the teachers uh, when we visited schools, especially this morning, we talked to them and we asked them how relevant are the information in the booklets, booklets and most of them were positive. They said they told us that they, they could use the exercise and activities mm. uh, uh, themselves and they can also try to, I don't know whether they are allowed, but they can maybe uh, distribute, make copies and distribute if, if need be. Mm. But it's difficult at, at homes because there's no, you don't know how the supervision is yes. mm -hmm. and whether the learners are guided through these booklets or assisted by the learners or by maybe by elders. It's, it's difficult, but, but uh, what I've picked up from teachers, they are positive about, about the content. All right. Um, maybe, ma'am, uh, have you seen um, a change in the the amount of children that are on the streets that are playing around? Have you seen a, a slight change in that? Because pre previously in Riyabat they told us that some of the kids, most of the kids are now off the streets, so they just assume that it's maybe because of these booklets there's now something to keep them home. I haven't seen it, but I mean, we talk to parents and and because of the, the teacher and the profession. Mm. So, and I said that for the kids is to keep them busy. At least they have something that they can be busy at them. Yeah, all right. Yeah, so the, the, um, the only thing is that not although not all learners mm. um, are coming to, get, or to schools to get it because some are on farms and mm. we will never reach each and everybody but at least um, the ones that could be reached they receive the booklets and they can make use of it 
all right thank you guys so much for your co cooperation and we'll make sure to to do whatever we can to to assure that every kid or at least most children are reached by these booklets and then also something that i can just add there mm -hmm. is the booklets because in your region it's not only um your schools mm -hmm. in the regions that you are catered for because there's also learners or kids from other regions mm -hmm. that are here in your region so they will also benefit by it. so that's why we have said the numbers is mm -hmm. less for the amount of uh, booklets that we have to distribute it all right i'll take note of that um, yeah, so that's me, Elizabeth Joseph, and I'm in Marintal. Uh, thank you guys for joining us and make sure that you keep it locked on MyZone's Facebook page to see uh, more updates from other regions. Thank you. Yo, I like going places. This is why I told you being on a train is a fun thing ever. And I've, I've seen Marintal is distributing booklets to their um, town and outside their town. So I like visiting places. But then before I say goodbye, we'll head over to Elizabeth and she will be speaking to one of our teachers of principal. But for me here in the studio is bye. <laughs>Hi everyone, my name is Elizabeth Joseph and I am here in studio again with a lovely guest uh, but I'm not going to introduce her, she's going to introduce herself and just take us through her journey here at NMH and what it is that she has been doing. Um, yeah, it's not a secret anymore. So before we get into it, please allow us to sanitize our hands as you should also. It's a crucial time for us so make sure that you keep your mask on and you keep your hands very sanitized. So ma'am, how are you doing today? Good morning, I'm, I'm very fine. Awesome. Um, can you just introduce yourself to me and the, the guests and just tell us a bit about what it is that you were doing here and how that process has been like for you? My name is Krista Titus from Namibia Primary. I am here around to translate the booklet from Kweko mm -hmm. and then also to type them. All right. Um, so, how has that been like for you? Has it been exciting? Has it been a roller coaster? How how did you experience it? It was an amazing experience. It helped me with my language. So, it was a very very good experience. All right. And to your learners who are watching you right now, what would you like to tell them? Is there a specific message that you would like to share with them? I like my. I like to tell my learners to buy, buy these booklets and keep themselves mm -hmm. into learning process as we are now in e-learning. Mm. All right, there you have it, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. And uh, thank you, teacher, for joining me on the couch. Uh, thank you also, viewer, for um, keeping it locked on my zone's Facebook page. And enjoy yourself. Take in as much as you can during this time. And remember to study, study, study. Uh, so from us here, um, it's goodbye.